What is going on outside a windstorm? Uh, Still prayers going out to the victims of the tornadoes in uh, Tennessee, Middle Tennessee. I have family up in Cookville. You know, uh, Karen's aunt and her cousins live up there. 92.7 is doing a fundraiser and they're gonna take it to local people up there. I I've, I've donated some money to the Red Cross, but I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I I still encourage people because the Red Cross does great great stuff, okay? But uh, in this case, I want to make sure my money's not going to some admin fee, which is necessary, right? But in this case, I want my money to go directly to the victims. So anyway, there's a place for all kinds of uh, nonprofits like that. Anyway, back to this. You know, I'm a man of action, right? Yep. And when I say container homes don't make any sense, what do I do? I Trying go, well, you come up with alternatives, right? Don't you hate it when somebody bashes something online and then they don't have an alternative? They don't have a solution for it? Well, this is a solution, okay? And this is going to be in combination with uh, the package material package that I'm developing for an alternative also. And we're going, going to be doing a series of videos on how to install windows and doors and that kind of thing. But step one was developing, and I mean literally inventing a new siding system that mimics the exterior of a container. Because if people, if people like the, the look, then there's no Right, we're not here to judge people's, you know, what what they like. What I'm saying is, do it smart. Here's how to do it smart. Okay, so I went and designed this, this panel. You won't find this profile anywhere. And um, trim system, and we're going to make up. A, we're going to mock it up, and I'm going to show it people. We're going to we're going to make this available to people. Our manufacturer can ship all over the country, okay? If you want something, if you want an alternative, just stay tuned, okay? I'm gonna show you what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. This is from a guy, not bragging, 40 years in construction, and I've seen every siding system, every construction type, every construction method uh, built with all of them, okay? And so when I develop my own personal best practices, I don't do it because I think I'm some great builder. I do it because they are considered in the industry best practices, right? And having a siding system, a siding system is a rain screen system. It's not a structural system, hmm. okay? And the reason it's not is because we do things in construction in sequence. We develop our structural systems then we start to wrap those structural systems, right, with framing, and, and then we have bracing systems, okay? All this is gonna be discussed, but first we have to make this, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it as we go. First, we're gonna make up this mock-up that I can show people. Enough talk, right? I know Barrett's always like, you're boring me, Dad, get to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barrett, so we're gonna cut us a piece three feet long. This is the J-Mold that we had manufactured. It's like a giant piece of J-Mold. And you'll see here in a second how it works. So Barrett, this piece is a custom piece. And when I say custom, I don't mean it's expensive. All your trims are generally made. They don't have just a bunch of trims laying around when you order siding. They basically make it when you order it, okay? So this piece is designed to mimic the beam on the bottom of the container, okay? So we'll cut it. If I can... If I could just put up with this safety switch one more time. Okay, 
So Barrett, first thing, well, you would already have your window, your Tyvek installed and your windows installed, okay? So I'm putting this over this plywood, but the tie, this will be Tyvek. Okay? Yeah, that makes sense. Then you would put your J-mold on. If I was smart, I would have put that, so that panel's raised. so hard. I don't know. <laughs> it's just 3 H plywood. Right. So Barrett, what you would do is you would install your two pieces of trim first. Your J-mold at the top and this base piece. Right? And then what you would do is you would uh, slide it in. Got lucky, didn't I? And then set it on top of this piece. Nice. Like that and screw it in and then this you can put this base piece on first but see this piece is meant to be let's say i mean this is kind of the look you're looking for because this mimics that beam on the bottom of a container yeah but it, you could order it to where it, it was wider but it this overlaps this at least an inch about an inch and a quarter so what happens is and i'm going to talk to them about this this is obviously a prototype, right? Mm -hmm. This metal needs to be bent to where it the water will drip off here instead of running. It, it gets it to be okay for you. It'd be nice if it just dripped, but right now it would run back and then run down and then run off. And this would, this like if this was the bottom of your floor system, this would hang down. I'm just leaving, I left this gap here because we're gonna make a stand but this would hang down in a normal situation. Oh, okay, yeah. This would be, this would hang down past your foundation. <laughs> right, so Barrett, what you would, at this point, you've already got your siding installed, right? Because what happens is you get a, you're gonna screw here and get your typical siding screw. You can use the, I guess you can use the screws without washers if you want to, but you would have a screw on this rib, one in the middle, like that middle rib and one on each end. And that way you would already know where are these screws, right? You wouldn't put this piece on until after that, the, the siding was on. And that, cause you want to line your screws up, right? Mm-hmm. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put Two two before it's coming down, we're gonna make a stand. Gotcha. Almost like a target stand, right? So, um, why did I, why was I bringing that up? Oh, That's why because, you got it because this, this uh, side, I mean, this plywood's real thin. I did this, I used this 3 8 plywood just to make the display lightweight, but we're gonna have a stand eventually. That's awesome, Barrett. Pretty cool, dude. Go lean it against the garage door and we'll get us a picture of it. There's our thumbnail right there. <laughs> you you holding it up. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, that's really that cool. cool? Mm -hmm. See, I think the base piece would really add, you know, if you could imagine that going all the way across and then wrapping around corners. And we don't have... Our screws aren't long enough to go through the ribs that they gave us. These screws down here, but you can notice that um, I've screwed, you know, those in the center of those ribs, which is where you would have your other screws. Now, what would happen is you lap, you know, you lap your panels over and you would wait till you lapped it to run the screw through. So you'd put those three, those screws in because it's already lapped. Then you put run your screws down here. And then once you lap the next sheet, you would run your screws down that one. That's how it would work. But see, and Barrett was asking me, what were the questions you were asking me? So you would have a four inch corner at the corners that would wrap around the corner. That'll be in the drawings. And uh, the idea would be to just run the corner down 
and let the base trim wrap around the corner. You would miter it, let it run around the corner. I guess you could run the corner over it, but it would look better if you let the bottom beam look run around the corner and then, you know, or it might look more like a shipping container if you lap the corner over. This is where it's going to be kind of a user discretion. But this is a solution, guys. This is your solution right here. Now, we're going to get into, into another video later as to why. It works better because you frame your structure first, right? Then you put your OSB on your sheeting. Then you put your Tyvek. Then you install your windows and doors, which are integrated with the Tyvek. Then you put your siding system over that, okay? Mm -hmm. That J-mold at the top would also run around windows and doors. And that's the sequence. You don't put your siding on first and then come back and build your house inside of it, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because of the way you have to weatherize a house, the way you have to insulate, you know, they just don't, they heat up, they're too hot. This siding is probably the way it's self-ventilating. -vent you see, that's the, other, that's the other point I wanted to make. A siding system, again, is a rain screen system and it's ventilated. You see ventilation, you can get ventilation. If this siding heats up in the summer, it has a way to ventilate itself. On a container home, you're putting insulation directly behind the, the container metal, right? You're literally putting this insulation up against your siding, which is not which is not cool. It's just not. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a big fancy YouTuber or who. That's just not proper. So anyway, this is about solutions, and this is solution. If you want to order this system for your house, I've already started designs on several designs for alternatives. Who's who's running their chainsaw outside? <laughs> and I'll have, what I'm going to have is package material lists. You'll have a design that mimics a, a container if that's what you want. The thing about it is uh, this system's going to allow for design flexibility. If you want to make your house 10 feet, 12 feet, 20 feet wide, here it is. This is your solution. So anyway, have I preached enough? I'm trying to show the base and you at the same time. Let me get out farther away. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's a good looking picture. So Barrett, this is this is the this is the trick. If I'm going to complain about something, I have to provide a solution or an alternative. Yeah, it's really interesting, right? And this is the alternative. If you're interested in this siding system, call me. We can uh, we can provide it to you. And the shipping, honestly, across the country. It's not that, it's not that much. So in my next video, I'm gonna have the cost. When we finish up this display, I'll have the cost information. I don't quite yet have what the cost information is on the total system per square foot. They all have to be priced uh, with the manufacturer that I'm working with. So anyway, uh, it's been a lot of fun, Barry, and we'll continue this journey. We need to come up with a name for this project so we can label it in our videos, our titles. What would it be? Are you calling it AT? Oh, you dash, AT dash panel siding and trim system. That's what it's called. All right. Thanks, guys.